it had been raining, as you all know, for about uh, two, two days. And I don't know if you can see back over here, but this was a deck back over in here. And I had stayed up all night long the second night just watching the rain and the, and the river coming up. Um, as you can see, there were steps and I, I got to it. There was five steps, four steps, three steps. So we just knew that the water was gonna be up here pretty high. We had just decided that maybe we we're just gonna sit down and have a little glass of water. And um, all of a sudden, kaboom, the garage blows up. Now, we don't know exactly what happened, but there was a gas heater in the garage and we think the pilot light got put out by the water. So we called 911. They were telling me, don't get in the water, don't get in the water because of the undertow. Get blankets, get the blankets into the water. Get them wet, put them over you in case the house blows up, then you won't burn to death. I'm sitting there going, am I gonna burn? Am I gonna drown? Am I gonna burn? Am I gonna drown? Freaking out. And I look up and here I have an angel on a jet ski, a neighbor that I had never met. So we've got three adults, two dogs, and a watered down jet ski trying to start it. It finally starts. So when it starts, we take off and we're going like this at the nose of the jet ski. We couldn't go anywhere. We were trying to get as far away as possible. And we got about 20 yards right out here when the whole house, bam, blew up. At that time, of course, they took me to um, Skyline with very high blood pressure and heart palpitations, but I was fine and, and pretty much walked away with not a scratch. But this is all I have. You know, and it's weird. The fridge was tipped, tipped completely over. Um, the office, which is actually the biggest part, the biggest room in the house. It was the messiest oh. one. That was horrible. Uh, just everything, everything, everything coated in mud. Um, we have like white carpet in the house, white walls, white everything. Everything was brown, um, drenched, everything soaking wet. And then, you know, you're walking around, you're looking at everything and you know, you have to start pulling it out and everything weighs so much. Everything is so heavy because mm -hmm. everything's so loaded down with water and it was horrifying. I had a futon mattress of it. It's like it was three or 400 pounds. You just kind of walk around and just awful. say one last final goodbye because you know you're not keeping any of it. So it's like, well, yep. it was nice having that while we had it. <laughs> now let's haul it out to the street. Yeah. Well, music cares is the first. Music cares. I mean, is not, and that's the not first. that's not trying to be you know an ass kiss or no better way to say it. But, but yeah, you guys are the first. It, the quickest too. I will say everybody that else you have to jump through hoops. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I did was grab wigs, jewelry, and anything that sparkled, because I could tell right away I was going to have to go back to work on the road, <laughs> and a lot of Opry appearances. There was an antique suitcase that my mother had given me. I'm from Pennsylvania, and one of the trips home, um, before I lost mother, she said, take this suitcase home with you. Don't open it till you get home and you're by yourself and have time to deal with it. And when I did, it was, it had all of the postcards and letters that I had written home. I'm gonna lose it. Uh, after I left home and when I first started traveling on the road, things from Jackpot, Nevada, and all these shows, places I was working for the first time that she had kept. And of course, that's all gone. I don't even know where the suitcase is. I lost a baby grand piano here in my home, but what means the most to me is the old upright that was in my dressing room at the Opry. I wrote so many songs on it, I've rehearsed so many times there, and that's totally gone. There are seniors who have lost everything that don't have the time to rebuild, or the, you know, the, they're living on, um, pension incomes, there's not extra money. And the last I heard, the lending institutions don't rush out to give 85-year-olds 30-year mortgages. I kind of always thought of uh, soundcheck as kind of a weird sort of a way. It's like the kitchen table to the Nashville music community because at some point or another, everybody's going to come here. Everybody's going to you know, pull up to the table. Everybody's gonna work here, uh, rehearse here, come into Tour Supply and buy stuff or have a rig built, um, or just come in and hang out with the fine folks that work here. I work for uh, Rascal Flats right now, and um, I'm Joe Don's guitar tech. 
Jodan had given me this guitar last year. And uh, you can see it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's beyond being a guitar right now. But uh, you know, those are all the braces inside that, uh, you know, just had turned loose. This right here is the Gibson J200. And uh, this was probably one of the best three sounding J200s that I had have ever played. Um, but uh, as you can see, its, it's days are, are pretty done. I had 122 guitars in the locker. 22 of them have survived. Uh, the others, you know, how many can you play at one time? <laughs> Just the fact that, I mean, that you guys have been there and said, hey, we're here to help, you know, um, um, you know, to get a phone call to say, hey, you've got a store credit at Guitar Center to, uh, to, in your name, just waiting for you, go get what you need. And, and get back to work. And the fact that, you know, that there were those of us who were not insured. Um, and there was someone, Music Cares, was there to help and go, hey, you know what? You guys are what makes this thing work, so this music business work. Um, we're here and we're here to help and, and, and go. Let us help. You know, that you can't put a price on that. You know, that's how. <laughs>